So turn in your workbooks to where there's a blank page at the very, very back. It's got a bunch of blank pages at the very, very back. Find a page that looks kind of nice. And as a little heading here, you can write how to use GCs. How to use GCs for graphing calculators. Okay? The basics. That's the on button. Okay? By the way, if you don't have your graphing calculator in front of you, you got it in front of you. Second function on is the off button. Okay? Yours will turn off after, I think, eight minutes of inactivity automatically to save the battery. By the way, if yours is saying low battery, ignore that for as long as you can. You can usually go for about two months with that low battery symbol before replacing them. If you need to replace them, it's four AAAs. Get them from your drugstore, get them from shopper's drug, wherever, nearest, nearest whatever store. So first thing you want to do is clear your screen. Clear, clear, clear. If you're stuck in a menu somewhere and you can't get out, Clear, 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 or second function quit, which is second function mode, that bails you out of almost everything. So before you freak out, do that. Okay. Let's do a mathematical operation together. I want to type in 8 to the 5th minus... 100 times negative 3. How do I type that in? Well, I type 8. Where's the exponent button here? <coughs> exponent button is right above the divided by. It's that little hat symbol thingy there. There's your to the power of 5 minus... 100 bracket. Now, the most common mistake, and I want you all to look up because I said this in my last class, and sure enough, three kids did it even though I said it. There is a huge difference on these calculators between your negative symbol, which is right here, and the subtraction symbol, which is right here. Now, I want this to be a negative 3. I'm going to pretend to make an error. I'm going to put a subtraction 3 and if I hit enter, my calculator gives me an error, a syntax error. If you ever get this message, first of all, don't freak out. It means you typed something wonky. But don't hit clear. One of the things I like about these calculators is if you pick option 2, if I hit the number 2, go to the error. It puts the cursor right where the glitch occurred. My cursor is flashing on that. It's saying, I don't know what you mean there. That should be a negative. Look up. That's a negative. That's a subtra oh. That's a subtraction. You can kind of see the difference. So a negative looks much smaller. Anyways, when you do that, you should get 33,068. Yes? Okay. Let's take the square root of that. Here's your x squared button. The square root button is second function x squared. You'll notice as soon as you type a square root, it does an open bracket automatically, Holly. Did you see where the square root? By the way, I need you kind of with me here. Square root, second function, x squared. So follow along. Right there. Okay. I don't want to retype 33,068. Where's the answer button on my graphing calculator? Trevor, the answer button is second function negative. Right above here, you can see ants in yellow. Anything in yellow is hit the yellow button. Close bracket. Square root of it is 181.8460888 blah 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 blah. That's where the square root is. Brackets are here. What other stuff might you want?
How do I find the uh, sixth root of 5,430? Look up. I type 6. The math button right here, if you hit the math button, this has all your obscure mathematical functions. So if you press the math button, I can see option 3 is to cube, although I'd probably just go to the power of 3. Option 4 is cube root. Option 5 is nth root, your generic root button. If I press option 5, and now I type 5, 4, 3, 0. That will take the sixth root of that. And with that little X up there, it's saying, look, this number is really supposed to be there, but the graphics can't show that. The sixth root of 5,430 is 4.19264, blah, blah, blah. In fact, if I go 4.1924, Three eight to the power of six. That should be really really close to five thousand four hundred and thirty. It is. So you okay where that is? Three over five plus seven over eight. How do I do fractions here? I literally go. Don't worry about a common denominator. Don't waste your time. That's math 8. I kind of like to assume that you know how to do it, but I'm also recognizing that I'm pressed for time. 3 slash 5 divided by 5 plus 7 divided by 8. Enter. Mr. Duick, that's a decimal. I want a fraction answer. No problem. One of the ones you'll use the most, especially in the probability section where we want our answers as fractions, if you press the math button again, the very first option goes from decimal to fraction. And so the really quick way to do that is to go hit the math button and then just go enter, enter. Look what you got. Look at your screen now. There it is. Yes? Enter, enter. 59 over 40. If I want to go 2 thirds plus 7 over 12, math, enter, enter. 5 over 4. Nice and quick. Okay. Type with me. 8 times 9 to the power of 3 minus 15. And hit enter. It does the bed mass properly for you. 8 times 9 to the power of 3 minus 15. Hit enter. You got 5817. Don't. Ah, I made a mistake. I didn't want to put 8 times. I wanted to put 7 times. To bring back any line previous, if you go second function, enter. Sorry, second function, enter. That brings back your last line of typing. And now I can go back, 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 back. I said I wanted to change the 8 to a 7. I can delete the 7 with the delete button right here. Dunk. Second function insert, which is shift delete. Put a 7 there. As a matter of fact, if you go second function enter, second fun keep hitting second function enter. It remembers the last 20 lines, I believe, that you've typed. So if you just borrowed a calculator from me, it's like you're getting secret messages from whoever used this last year. You can see what their last equations were. <gasps> Some of those might be from the final exam. Or maybe not. I wonder. <gasps> Ooh, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, oh, Mr. Duick, I don't know. Okay. So it remembers your last 20 operations. That can be really handy for something like the quadratic formula. Suppose you're doing the quadratic equation and you go bracket negative b. 8 plus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times a times c. I'm just making up numbers. Close bracket, close bracket. All over 2a. What about 4a? Uh, if you did your quadratic equation with the plus sign, 
then all you do is second function enter backspace 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 change the plus to a minus and there's your plus or minus b squared minus 4 ratio over to it very nice or if you're in chemistry and you're doing the same mathematical operation over and over to fill in a chart, but you just need to change one number each time, second function enters, change the number. Okay. How to graph. Press Y equals right here. You might have some graphs on your screen already. If you have a Y1 or a Y2 or a Y3, just press clear, down arrow, clear, down arrow, clear, until everything is cleared. So clear any graphs that you have there already. The other thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure that plot 1, plot 2, and plot 3 are not highlighted. If they are, just go up arrow and hit enter. That toggles highlighting on and off. You want to make sure none of them are highlighted. Those are stats graphs. If they're highlighted, it'll try and graph those as well. You don't want some strange graph coming out of nowhere showing up on your screen. Let's do our old standard, the parabola. So y1 equals, where is the x button? You guys with me okay, Holly? Good, yes? Or question. If you, by the way, if you fall behind or you can't do something, ask. We're good, Carly? Haley, I said Holly twice. Haley, sorry, Haley. We're good twice? Yes, happy? Okay. Y equals, where's the X button? Look up. Right next to the alpha, right there. X. Squared. Boom. Right here, X. And squared. To graph it, hit graph. Now I'm willing to bet your graph might not look like mine. It might. And the reason is we have to tell the graphing calculator which area of the graph to focus on. We could have all different windows. So press the window button right here. This tells the graphing calculator, how much of the screen or what dimensions of the screen to display to you. X min stands for the minimum X value. It's how far left it's going to graph. X max stands for how far right the graph is going to go. So I have my graph set up to go from negative 10 to positive 10. X school stands for my X scale 1 on this graph, each hash mark is going to go up by ones. Y min, this graph is going to go to negative 10. Y max, this graph is going to go to positive 10. Y scale, 1. So if your numbers don't match mine, just type them in and hit enter as you go along to get to the next line. The only one you don't want to change is this one here, X res. Uh-uh, don't change that. Okay. If you're getting an error, if you have a question, now is a chance to ask. Haley, we're good? No, yes, no. Yes, for sure? Because otherwise, you can't do the next step. You can't do the, something wonky? Yes, that's what I was trying to get at. Then, t So now hit graph, and all of our graphs look identical, yes? If they don't, now is a chance to raise your hand. We're good? Yeah, yeah? Okay. The last important one that we're going to talk about for now is the mode button, which is right here. If you ever press your mode button, for Math 12, you want everything in the first column to be highlighted except Right now, you want to be in degrees. If you borrowed a calculator, you're probably in radians. Just use your cursor key to move around until degrees is highlighted and press enter to toggle it on and off. Okay. 
Uh, one more thing, you can make your screen lighter or darker. I don't know how your calculator is set. If you go second function down arrow, second keep going second function down arrow, second function down arrow, second function down arrow, that makes your screen either lighter or darker. I can't remember what. Which one does it do? Lighter. Go second function up arrow until you're at a darkness that you like. All depends on how far you hold the calculator away from you and what angle. If you ever have a calculator and it's not going on, it might not be the battery. It might be so light you can't see the screen. So before you do anything else, try going second function, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow a bunch of times. Try making it dark, dark. All right. Now, keep your graphing calculators out. We're going to be using them later on. But first, the homework from last day, lesson two, page 98. Which ones would you like me to go over? Number seven? Yep, any before that? This one here? Someone already got the candy, by the way. Now, I did say for 4F, this is not going to be on your test. However, this trick that I'm going to show you is going to come in handy after Christmas. So let's do 4F. Can you read me the hint, Brett? Sorry, as what? It's not 6X. That's completely different. I gotta be fussy here because I gotta beat a bad habit out of you. Okay, six to the power of x. Okay, since we're doing exponents all this unit, you better be able to be fussy on the difference between a six x and a six to the power of x. Here's what I'm gonna do. Temporarily, I'm gonna let that be a variable and replace it in here. Now watch what happens before you write down. Just watch what happens. Look up. Watch what happens. Have patience. I'll pause in a second. Watch what happens when I do that. Now the 0 stays the same. The 72 stays the same. The plus stays the same. But I'm going to write this as 74a because 6 to the x I'm replacing with an a. And I'm going to write this as 2a squared. Why a squared? Well, this is 6 to the 2x, which is really 6 to the x all squared, I'm replacing every 6 to the x with an a. Write that down. Then we'll talk about why. Joran, did I give you your candy for getting this one? I did. Joran was the one who already got this one, so pull your socks up, everybody else. You okay with that so far? What kind of an equation is this? Quadratic. How do I know? Got a squared. Have I written it as a quadratic equation, replacing the 6 to the x with a variable? Yes. I think the first thing that I would do is I would go divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. And it gives me a squared minus 37a plus 36 equals 0. A much nicer quadratic because now, Dominique, there's no coefficient in the front. This factors. What are two numbers that multiply to positive 36 and add to negative 37? Justin, I think you said negative 36. Did you? Negative 36 and negative 1. This factors into a minus 36, a minus 1, equals 0. What are the roots? What are the roots? Now, hold on. Don't write this down. Just watch for a second. I was going to go a equals and a equals, but what's a actually? What was the substitution that I did at the very beginning? You know what? I'm going to write, here's the equations that I get out of here. 6 to the x equals 36, and 6 to the x equals 1. 
and I can solve these in my head. X to what equals 36? What does X have to be for this to be true? 6 to what power equals 36? With a 6 to the third is 36? 6 times 6 times 6 is 36? Really? You're tired right now. Everyone else? Huh? Yes. And a little bit of a trick question. 6 to what power equals 1? Ah. There's your roots. There's your real solution from this equation. It's a quadratic because I got two answers in disguise, because it wasn't immediately obvious that there was a squared in there, but there is a squared in there. This trick of taking something ugly and substituting it with something that gives you a prettier equation, that's the trick I want you to remember. After Christmas, we'll be solving quadratic trig equations so that we'll have 2 sine squared plus 2 sine minus 5. I'm going to replace the signs with a's, and we'll solve a quadratic 2a squared plus 2a plus 5, and then bring the signs back later. Easier. Any before number 7? Yes. This one here? Yep. First of all, what base am I going to write everything as? Pretty sure... And I'm going to do the right-hand side first because I know I'm going to get it right and it's no longer blank and I'll feel better. I know this is 3 squared. I've done half the equation. Yay! And I know that this is 3 to the x plus 1. Yay! And I know that this is 3 cubed to the 2x minus 1. Yay! What's this thing as an exponent? <gasps> cool! I now have a power to a power on the bottom, and I have a power to a power to a power on the top, and I multiply everything. In the interest of saving space, I'm going to go 3 times a third first, because you know what 3 times a third is? Ah, these guys would end up just canceling. On the top, I would get 3 to the 2x minus 1 all over. On the bottom, I would get 3x times... Oh, fractions is the easiest. It's top times top, bottom times bottom. It's x times 1, which is x. 1 times... It's x over 3. Plus 1 over 3 equals 3 squared. Now what? Well, I'm not going to panic. I'm going to be stubborn and clever. By the way, I would consider this probably a little harder than I feel comfy on the test because it's a weird question. Now what? How would I get rid of the fractions using a math 8 trick? No, no, no. Even easier than that. Maybe we're not talking about the same fractions. I'm talking about the great big fraction on the left. Yeah, you do. What can I do here? Absolutely, I can do it here. It looks ugly. I can still do it here. I heard it finally. What? No. I can't. No. Cross multiply. Is this not one fraction equals one? It's one ugly fraction, yes. But it's one fraction equals one fraction. The grade 8 trick still has to work. What's the bottom of this fraction over here, by the way? Got to still work. Cross multiply. And I'll get 3 to the 2x minus 1 equals... 3 squared times 3 to the x over 3 plus a third. Still ugly, but that definitely actually looks better. Do I have one base equals one base? Say no. I don't have one base. I have one base equals two bases. So you ready? 
Do I have one base equals one base? Say no. <laughs> well, then I better write that right-hand side as one base. What's, oh, is that a three? Is that a three? My bases here are the same, and I'm multiplying. What do I do with the exponents? Add them. Ah, look up. Adding fractions is a bit more work. That's not a two. It's a two. Okay, I'll drop the left side down. Is there an x in here? So in terms of like terms, there's going to be an x over 3 plus 6 thirds plus 1 thirds. By the way, have I done anything new so far? Nope, stubborn and clever. Do I have one base equals one base? Are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. The equation I'm going to spend the rest of my time solving now is this bad boy. 2x minus 1 equals x over 3 plus 7 over 3. Now, what don't I like about this equation? Fractions. In grade 9, you learned a wonderful trick that can make the fractions in an equation vanish. Multiply everything by the common denominator, which in this case is 3. I'm going to put a little 3 right there, a little 3 right there, a little 3 right there, a little 3 right there. And the nice thing is, you know what happens to these 3s, Ellen? And to these 3, they cancel. In fact, I get this. Oh, <gasps> so much fun! 6x minus 3 equals x plus 7. Now what? Minus x from both sides, all the 5x. Plus 3 to both sides, all the 10. What's x? Oh, that was fun! So much fun. Any others before number 7? Yeah. I like 4C. I like 4C. Four C and four D is also very, very similar. Okay. Um is this exponent on the forty nine? Then let's move the forty nine over. How? Yeah, I'm gonna do this first thing. I'm going to write this as 7 over 12 to the 2x equals 144 over 49. What do I want to write this as? I'm pretty sure, Sandali, since I can't break a 7 down or a 12 down, it's not, they're not some numbers in this photo. I'm pretty sure I want to write this as right-hand side as 7 over 12 to some power. Problem. What's that in disguise? A 12 on top. Where's the 12 here? What's this in disguise? On the bottom. Where would I prefer it to be? It would be wonderful if there was some kind of mathematical operation that acted, oh, I don't know, like an elevator, as it were, and would cause things to change levels. Okay. And this is 12 to the what? And this is 49 to the what? I think the whole thing is going to look like this then. If I want to get the 7 on top and the 12 on the bottom, it can't be a 2. It's got to be a negative 2. Do I have 1 base equals 1 base? Are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. Uh, so 2x equals negative 2. I think x equals negative 1. I'm not sure, but little question. Nombre siete. Seven. Dominique, what am I going to write everything as? A power of what? Five? No. Eight? No. Two? Yes. 
So what's 8 written as a 2? Two? 2 to the what? What's 1 over 8 written as a 2? Okay, this first one is 2 to the negative 3 to the x minus 3 equals. I'm happy with that, 2. What's 16 as a 2? 2 to the 4th to the 2x plus 1. Power to power, power to power. I'm going to get 2 to the junk, junk, negative 3x plus 9 equals. I'm happy with that 2 there. 2 to the chunk chunk 8x plus 4. Do I have one base equals one base? Not yet. Oh, on the right hand side I got two bases. What's the base here? What's the base here? <gasps> the bases are the same and I'm multiplying. What do I do with exponents when my bases are the same and I'm multiplying? What is the exponent on the 2 here? It's invisible. So you're saying it's that? In fact, call me silly, but if I add the exponents, don't I get... That? Yes? Are my bases the same? Do I have one base equals one base? Then I can equate the exponents. The actual equation I'm going to solve is negative 3x plus 9 equals 8x plus 5. I think you'll get 4 equals 11x when you minus 5 from both sides and plus 3x to both sides. I think you'll get x equals 4 over 11, and they want to the nearest hundredth. I used to know what 4 over 11 is. It 0.363636? Doesn't seem right to me. Gosh, have I forgotten my mixed numerals? Oh, it is 0.36. I'm right. Wow. Yay! Happy day, happy day. Is that okay? Once again, did I really do anything new there? Nope, stubborn, clever, careful. Turn to lesson three. Lesson three. The exponential function. exponential function. Now in my last class I didn't get through the whole lesson. I got through part of it. So if that happens here we'll do two lessons on Monday which works okay anyway because the second lesson fits into this one. If you have not finished the homework from last day and you really 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 want to finish it because I like almost everything that I gave you last day. Warm-up number one. Mallory, who's a medical research scientist, discovered a new bacteria culture which can help strengthen a person's immune system. To find the growth rate, she isolated five cells of the culture, and here's what she noticed. After one hour, there were 10 cells. After two hours, there were 20 cells. After three hours, there were 40 cells. How many cells would there be after four hours? Spot the pattern. 80. Okay. What's happening every hour? A says, let T represent the time in hours, okay, and N of T represent the number of cells after T hours. The formula can be written like this, where T is an exponent. Find the values of A and B. So as an equation, what they're saying is, there is an equation for which when I put in a 0, I get a 5 back. When I put in a 1, I get a 10 back. When I put in a 2, I get a 20 back. When I put in a 3, I get a 40 back. When I put in a 4, I get an 80 back. Can anybody spot the equation that looks like this? I always, 
I rarely, every once in a while, I have a kid who can see it. Otherwise, I'll tell it to you, but I always pause. Somebody come up with the equation. Sorry? Is it a parabola? No. Even weirder. So here's the equation, and here's how I get it. Brett, how many bacteria did I start out with? Start out with that. Start out with what you start out with. Brett, 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 Brat. There's a Freudian slip. Say one thing to the mother. Uh, Brett, what's happening here? The growth rate is 2 to the t. And the t is an exponent. In fact, it's not a parabola, Ellen. It's an exponential equation. For the first time, t, the variable, is sitting up here. We looked at it a little bit last day. I'll prove to you that this works, by the way. Ellen, put a 0 in. What's anything to the 0 power? Times 5 is? You mean 0 gives you a 5? Yes, it does. Let's try putting a 2 in. What's 2 squared times 5? Does 2 give you a 20? Yes, it does. Let's try putting a 3 in. What's 2 cubed times 5? Does 3 give you a 40? It works. That's an exponential equation. Called that because the variable is an exponent. B says, use this formula to determine how many cells there were after 8 hours. What they're really saying is find n when t is 8. n of 8. And it's going to be straight calculator. 5 times 2 to the 8th. On your calculator, on your graphing calculator, get used to it. No 5 times 2 to the 8th. Can't remember where the exponent button is. Find it again. Oh, yeah, it was a little hat thing. What do you get? Uh, maybe, hang on, hang on. I can do this in my head. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 56, 56 times 5 is going to be 1,000 plus 200 plus 250 plus 8, 1,280. Woohoo! C. After 12 hours, there's 20,480 cells. When was there? How many hours ago? How many hours did it take to get half that many? After 12 hours, there's 20,480. How many hours did it take to get half that amount? Ah, you guys are smart. Every year I have a bunch of kids that say, uh, six. No. Eleven, because if it doubles every hour, it had half as many one hour ago. Eleven. I have a little talk. I don't think I'll be able to show it in class. I won't have time. But the guy who's giving the talk says, he argues, one of the biggest issues in society, one of the biggest reasons that we are so terrible at planning the future is we don't have a good understanding of how exponential growth works. Put your pencils down and look at it. Let's suppose this is the Earth. There's the Earth. And let's suppose right now, let's suppose that the population is that big. We have a huge amount of room. You want to burn some oil? Go ahead! You want to make some landfills? Pile up some garbage? Go ahead! We got lots of room. You want to fish the oceans? Go ahead! and the population doubles. Still lots of room. Still lots of room. We would have most people, because they don't understand how exponential growth works, they'd be saying, oh, for Pete's sakes, global warming, are you stupid? Look at all the room. We Please. We double one more time. We got a problem. We've run out of everything. Most most of the experts that I've read 
think we're here right now and sometime in the next 20 years you're starting to see bits of it already have gas prices gone way up in the past 10 years yeah more people and more cars electricity a couple of years ago California was actually having rolling blackouts so your town wouldn't have power for two hours at certain times of the day because they're running out but 10 years ago California was go ahead get more air conditioners lots of room send more build more houses lots of room we don't understand how exponential growth works far too many citizens far too many politicians for part C would answer oh six hours ago lots of time lots of time Dumb. D says use a graphing calculator to graph this okay get your graphing calculators out press Y equals and clear whatever equation you got there now I want to graph this. My calculator does not have an N. Instead, I've got to put a Y there. My calculator does not have a T. What letter am I going to put there instead? X. I'll adjust. So I'm going to go 5 times 2 to the power of, and I'm going to press my X button. Now, if you hit graph, you're going to get some nonsense. What did you get if you hit graph? Nothing terribly entertaining. We want to adjust this window. So press window. Now remember, x is actually time. Look at my chart. What's the smallest amount of time that appears in my chart? So I'm going to let x min be 0. What's the maximum amount of time that this question mentions anywhere? Not three. What's the maximum amount of time this question mentions anywhere in the question? Why don't I get the whole thing on there? Twelve. I think going up by ones there would work okay, because twelve hash marks in an area of screen uh, that long should be okay. So scale one. Now, why is the number of bacteria? What's the fewest number of bacteria this question mentions? Five. I could go five. I like to see zero, so I'm actually going to start out at zero high. I always like to see the x-axis. What's the largest number of bacteria that this question mentions? 20,480. So I'm going to go to a nice roundish number. I'm going to go to 21,000. If I'm going from zero to 21,000 in a space this big, would a scale of 1 make, would going up by 1s with hash marks make much sense? Kara's shaking her head. Like, you know what, Kara? I'm going to let my scale be about uh, 5,000. Now hit graph. All of our graphs should now look the same. And we should be able to see way more stuff going on. Is there anybody who didn't get that? Now is your chance to ask. Usually it means a little typo. I can fix it right away. Okay. As the graph, oh, it looks like this. The further right you go, the steeper it gets. The further left you go, the closer it gets to zero, but never quite touches. In fact, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. Looks like this if we did our disco map. Because it's getting bigger as we move to the right, we call it exponential growth. You know what an exponential decay graph looks like? It gets smaller as we move to the right. Chernobyl is a city in the former Soviet Union. What happened at Chernobyl? Why is Chernobyl famous? Eric. More specific, there are plenty of places that have nuclear power plants that aren't famous. What happened at Chernobyl? 
Sorry? Didn't blow up. Didn't actually leak technically. A leak is like, oh, but it, it, had a, it had a complete core meltdown. It had a nuclear meltdown. The worst nuclear power plant disaster that we've had. It happened in the height of the Cold War, and so the Russians at that time denied it. All the world nations were detecting, a, in 1986, a huge radioactive cloud circled the planet three or four times before it finally faded into nothingness, and all of our instruments were detecting it, and when we traced our way backwards to the cloud's origin, it kept starting somewhere in central Russia. So we, the U.S., Canada, all the countries phoned Russia and said, you've got a problem. Russia said, yeah, no, we don't. Finally, after a couple of weeks, they fessed up and they admitted, yeah, we've had a very, very serious nuclear reactor meltdown. If you want to read just a tragic story, Google Chernobyl and just find how horrible it was because the way they fixed it was they sent, they ordered soldiers to their death. For example, they couldn't get the fire to stop, so they flew helicopters and dropped liquid concrete from the helicopters into the reactor. Uh, the pilots all died horrible deaths a couple of months later of radiation. Even to this day, people that live in the area have a high incidence of leukemia. Kids in that area are born without, with, with birth defects. They moved the town of Chernobyl, but there are still some people that live there. Um, hor horrible the way it was handled. So it was partly the fact that it was a nuclear meltdown and partly the fact that they botched it so badly. The one that happened, that almost happened in Japan with the earthquake, nothing compared to this. In fact, I don't think the Japan one leaked much radiation at all. So, radioact radiation, radioactive radiation decays, radioactivity decays. Now, again, just like in the previous question, Carly, we've cooked the numbers to make the numbers nice mathematically. Because I'm going to tell you that cells don't divide, don't multiply by two on every single hour. It's they would multiply by 1.67 every three hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds. Like, you never get nice numbers like that. They've done the same thing here. So it says, initially, they measured 32,768 units of radioactive iodine. After one week, there was that many. Two weeks, there was that many. Three weeks, there was that many. What's the pattern here? I, I Someone said something, I think. What's the pattern? What's going on here? Justin, did you say, I think, did you say it? I, I, I like the way you said it. Almost every year people say dividing by two. And I say, well, I don't want to divide because here I multiplied. Instead of dividing by two, what number would I multiply by? But you said it right away. Yeah, as it turns out, the growth rate here is a half. says, use the formula to determine how many units of radioactive iodine were left after 14 weeks. They want me to find N of 14. I'm going to go 30. Oh, turn my calculator on. Clear, clear, clear to get out of the graph menu. 32,768 times bracket 1 half close bracket to the power of says two. This is how I know they cook these answers. These are fake answers. But okay, fair enough. <laughs> says use a graphing calculator to graph this. Okay. Y equals clear the equation you have there. And the equation is this bad boy. So thirty 2,768 times bracket 1 half close bracket to the power of, oh, I can't do T. What am I going to do instead? X. Where's the X? Ah, oh, yeah. Right there, Haley. Enter. Oh, except they also gave me the view window that they want me to use so that all of our graphs look the same. So press window and carefully type in this view window. A 
I guess on the y axis we're gonna go up by ten thousandths, which makes sense. Once you do that, hit graph, and you should get a decay graph, a graph that starts up steep and gets shallower and shallower and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And closer. Like that. Like this. Some uh, handy features. How much iodine is left after five weeks? Don't type it in. Instead, you have the graph in front of you. Press the trace button right here. And once you press the trace button, the little cursor should appear. And what that's saying is you can use your left and right arrows to move around, and it gives you y values that go with. So after five weeks, uh, oh, oh, I can get 4.936 weeks, and I can get 5.03131949 weeks. There's a better way to trace. So you're you're all in the trace menu. In Yes? Instead, is it yes or no? Oh, you're not in the trace menu. Oh, okay. Uh, instead, type 5. If you type the number 5 when you're in the trace menu, at the bottom, x equals appears. Hit enter. Oh, after five weeks, how much iodine was left? 1,024. After seven weeks, how much iodine was left? 256. After 10 weeks, how much iodine was left? You get an error. Why? What's the biggest x value that I was graphing? 8. I'd have to change my window if I wanted to get the 10. Maybe easy enough to do. Sometimes, if I'm doing the same equation over and over and over and over and over, but just with different numbers, like maybe in chemistry, I type the equation. Oh, go to. I type the equation in here. Pick a big window and just use my trace feature. It's nice. We call this exponential decay. Turn the page. Exponential functions. An exponential function is an equation that looks like that where the x is an exponent, where b is the base, b is the base, b is the base. I wonder how I can remember that b is the base. And a is the coefficient in front. In fact, Trevor, a is a vertical stretch if I go back to last unit. And it could even be a vertical reflection if I go back to last unit. We have to add a couple of restrictions, though. A can't be 0. Why can't A be 0? If A was 0, I'd have 0 times B to the X. What's 0 times anything? That's not going to give me this shape. Guarantee it. Oh, and we add one more thing. B has to be positive. You can't have a negative base. Put your pencils down. Here's why you couldn't have this. Don't write this down. When this was even, your answer would be positive. When this was odd, your answer would be, you'd have a graph that was positive, then negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. I guarantee you, that's not giving you this shape. That's jumping all over the place. What would that graph look like? Try it on your calculator if you're bored sometime. Ooh, let's try that right now, just because. Y equals clear, clear, clear. Negative 3 to the, pow to the power of x. I'd like to look up, here's your next shortcut, which is why I'm doing this. I want to graph from negative 10 to positive 10, from negative 10 to positive 10. It's such a handy window. If you press zoom, these are built-in windows. And zoom standard, option 6, gives you negative 10 to positive 10, negative 10 to positive 10. What appeared? Your calculator doesn't even know how to graph it.
Maybe that's too big. Let's try a smaller number. Your calculator doesn't even know how to graph it. So the base has to be positive. Let's look at two graphs, and we're going to do these in our head. We're going to compare 2 to the x and 1 half to the x. We're going to do these pencil and paper, not with technology. First thing it says is state the values of a and b for both of these graphs. What's a here? Not 2. It's the number in front. What number is in front here? It's invisible. And also a equals 1 here. In other words, we're saying, look, ignore vertical stretches while we start you out. What's b the base here? 2. What's b the base here? B says, sketch the graph of 2 to the x. So I'm going to graph y equals 2 to the x. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to plug in numbers. And I always start with 0. What's 2 to the 0? Zero? 0 goes with 1 on the graph. 0 goes with 1. 0, comma 1 is a point. What's 2 to the 1? When x is 1, y is 2. What's 2 to the 2? When x is 2, y is? Is what? 4. 2 over 4 up. What's 2 to the 3rd? When x is 3, y is a, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8. What's 2 to the 4th? 2 times 2 times 2. 16 off my graph. Forget it. Let's go in the other direction. What's 2 to the negative 1? Elevator 1 over 2. What's 2 to the negative 2? Elevator 1 over 4. What's 2 to the negative 3? Elevator 1 over 8. Now, I can't graph negative 3, 1 8 very easily. I can't graph negative 2, 1 quarter very easily. I can graph negative 1, 1 half. And this gives us the shape. It looks like that. Eric, you know what it looks like? Put your pencils down, Eric. Looks like this. Looks like this. Can you do that with your hands, Eric? One hand here and one hand here. Disco man. Oh, you might hit Brianne in the head accidentally. That's just a risk she's going to take. Okay. So you got that? I'll be picking on you all day, all year for this one. Because I don't have a basketball player in the back row. Could go with Trevor. Because he's got long arms. Okay, hands back down. Let's graph this next one. I'm going to do this in red. y equals 1 half to the x. And like always, I start out with 0. What's anything to the 0 power? 1, right? What's 1 half to the 1? A half. What's 1 half squared? Four. Okay, we're getting smaller. Let's go in the other direction. What's 1 half to the negative 1? What's the elevator when the fraction's already on the bottom? It's going to make it. What's 1 half to the negative 1? 2. And you know what 1 half to the negative 2 is? 4. Keep the pattern going. 8. This is going to go through negative 3, 8 high. Negative 2, 4 high. Negative 1, 2 high. 0, 1 high. Back. Can't look like that. Eric, my friend, put your pencil down. Every single exponential graph looks like this or like this. Do that for me, please. Lean forwards. Like this. Lean forwards. 
or like this. Slide forward. The chair forward. Every exponential graph looks like this or like this. Like this or like this. You're supposed to hit them in the heads, Eric. No. <laughs> As a graph. Okay? That's how it works. It's your one chance to smack somebody up the head. Now, since they oh, oh 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 by the way, put your pencils down. Don't write this down, but watch, 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 watch. Look, 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 look. Is this true? Is one half to the x the same as that? Why? You're right, it is the same. Why? Where'd the negative come from? Oh, elevator. Um, look at this, look at this, look at this. Didn't I replace x with negative x? Isn't that a horizontal reflection? Oh, there's another way to think about it. Instead of fractions, you can think about it as, it's actually a horizontal reflection, which it is. It's a nice tie-in with last unit. Whatever. Here's what I want you to notice. Here's what they have in common. Eric, what does every single exponential graph look like? Come on. Come on. This is your cue every time, buddy. Don't let me down here. Here or what's the domain right now? By the way, not straight up, curving up, right? Getting steeper. Yes. Not this, though. This levels. Okay. What's your domain? Point. Sorry? What's the domain of Eric? What's the domain of this? Well, we've never said infinity all year. What do we call that? So in this chart, put your hands down now, Eric. Domain. All reals. And it's the same for both of them. So I'm just going to write it big and put it in both. What's the range? How high do these graphs go? Forever. How low do these graphs go? Zero, but not touching. Closer and closer to zero. Everything above, but not touching zero. How will I write that? Everything above z zero, but not touching, so no or equal to. What's the x-intercept of an exponential graph? It's a trick question. An x-intercept of an exponential graph. It's a trick question. Isn't one. It gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and, and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the x axis. Never touches. What's the y intercept of an exponential graph? Zero, comma, one. And what I said to you earlier was both of these graphs have as an asymptote the x axis. What's the equation? of the x-axis align horizontally zero high. Nice. y equals zero. That is true of every single exponential graph that doesn't have a coefficient or anything else done to it. <coughs> Put your pencils down and look up and turn your brains on. On Monday, I'm going to introduce you to the log graph, the logarithmic graph. And you know what? All I'm going to tell you is it's the inverse of the exponential. It's the inverse of the exponential. So just by telling you that and looking at this chart, you ready? If logs are inverses of exponential, what's the domain of every log graph? Think about it. X is greater than 0 because the range is going to become a domain. It's going to be x and y. You know what the range of every log graph is? Oh, what's the x-intercept of a log graph? 1, comma, 0. The y-intercept. Does it have any y-intercepts? No. Does it have an asymptote? Yes. Vertical asymptote? No. Horizontal asymptote? Sorry, horizontal asymptote? No. Has a vertical asymptote. y equals 0. So even though you've never met the graph, You've seen parts of it before. You have to go early or something? Okay. Oh. Growth. Decay. Dear Mr. Do It, you are my favorite math teacher. I've attached five dollars here. To Excellent.
front page. What do you think happens as my base gets bigger? Let's find out. Get your calculators out. We're going to do three equations. So clear. Clear everything and go zoom standard right away so that our window is the same. Zoom button, option six. Now here are the three we're going to graph. Two to the power of x, enter. Three to the power of x, enter. And then five to the power of x, enter. But before we hit graph, I'm going to show you a few more things you can do. You see, if we graph these, they're all going to look the same. If you go up arrow and to the left of y2 with your cursor, so that you're right here. And you hit enter once. That makes this graph a thick line so you can tell it apart. If you go down arrow so that you're to the left of y3, enter once would make it a thick line. We already got that. Enter again colors everything above the graph. I don't want to do that. Enter again colors everything below the graph. I don't want to do that. What I do want is this one, which is a follow the bouncing ball. Now hit graph. There's 2 to the x. There's 3 to the x. And there's 4 to the x. As this number gets bigger, what happens to the steepness? It gets steeper, which makes sense. Here's what you need to memorize. For any exponential function without a vertical stretch, with no a, x-intercept, none. Y-intercept, 0, 1. Domain, all reals. Range, everything above, not touching, 0. Equation of the asymptote, Y equals 0. For the page. Warm-up number five wants us to explore what happens when you put an A in front. I already know. That's a vertical stretch. So if normally my y-intercept is 0, 1, what would the y-intercept of this one be? What's my vertical stretch right here? It's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. It would be 0, 2. In fact, turn the page. Page 105. This is the page we want to be on. The y-intercept is normally 0, comma, a. Oh, and if a is 1, like the first bunch that we looked at is 0, comma, 1. If a is, okay. There is blank x-intercept. There is blank x-intercept. What word goes there? No x-intercept. The x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. The domain is all reals, and the range is everything above zero. Remind me to 